What does it mean to be an innovator? The word innovator can come out as distant for many people. It's a word that holds significance, a significance which people deny that they don't and they can't have. This is simply not true. You can become an innovator. From young, I was also a victim of believing that people such as myself were incapable of innovating. I was in this trapped mindset, so it stunted my personal growth. I believed that there were those who were born to innovate and that there was a veil in society between us. Coming back to the question of what it means to be an innovator, what is an innovation? An an innovation by the majority in simple terms is a useful new idea. However, the rest is subjective. Therefore, it is up to our choice to dictate what it truly is. An innovation does not have to be something big. It can be something minuscule, but something that affects people. Through innovation, something that is minuscule can turn out to be grand, creating a revolution. One story of how innovations are made and how it impacts people is the story of how mirrors came to be in elevators. With periods of industrialization, taller buildings were being built. To get to the top quicker, elevators were essential. However, due to its early production, the elevators were comparatively much slower back then. High engineers were given a task to solve this issue. Their first solution was to create a faster one, which instead caused another problem, money. Instead, think of the mechanical problem, they tackled it with something no one else would have thought of. They looked at the initial problem and contemplated why people would complain it is slow. They found out that it's because there's nothing to distract them, therefore they were always fixated on the fear of falling down. To solve this problem, they tested mirrors, and to their surprise, it worked. With the installation of mirrors, there were fewer complaints. Now, most elevators, if not all elevators, have mirrors installed in them, showing the impact these engineers had while given a task. The mirrors you see in the elevators today serve even more purposes than they were intended to. Now, mirrors can help prevent or alleviate crimes because they give you a better view of the surrounding. Overall, there have been so many eventual effects created by the origin, which is the engineer, and each innovation has shown has its has its own ripple effects. The innovation of mirrors in elevators stem from a problem. They looked at the initial problem and asked themselves questions. They first initiated a potential solution from research. They tested it because it did not work. They researched again and tested again. Through asking questions and repetition, the engineers were able to create an innovation. Now tell yourselves, are you incapable of it? Are you incapable of asking questions to yourself and finding a possible solution to solve that issue? In fact, you may have already made an innovation, making you an innovator. People are preconceived with the notion that they're not capable of becoming an innovator. Sure, making a revolutionary idea such as light bulb may require more time and intelligence. However, the method is still the same. People may be born with high intelligence and drawn autonomously into innovations. However, most innovators aren't born. They are made. This postulate is exemplified by research done from the University of California, San Diego's School of Global Policy and Strategy. Two educators from the university put out the question, the notion, that innovators are born by creating a contest for the university's, university's computer science and engineering students. The contest consisted of 190 students, of which 100 students participated self willingly while the other 90 students were induced with a monetary incentive. According to their findings, even though the contest required high technological skill, both the induced and self-willed participants produced around the same results. After the findings, the researchers the researchers concluded that people who make good innovations aren't necessarily born with that trait, but that trait can be manifested into a person. They further said that there's a psychological barrier preventing people from being at the best potential. What this research shows completely changes many people's minds. What they thought was true was false, and the unrealization actually affected themselves from making innovations. In addition, what the induced parts was needed to perform as well as the sub well, participants was, uh, was a monetary incentive, or in general, a way for motivation. Motivation can be used as a means to uplift people in society. The, res the research which I presented today can change how global policies work. What companies thought was a necessary trait can be made into employees with incentives. Motivation is a necessary aspect which many people, including myself, have lacked when trying to do something. It can break the psychological barrier and make you grow as a person and a learner.
Overall, innovation isn't necessarily something big. It can be brought upon to someone, and the only one stopping you is yourself. Think, overcome, and execute. That creates innovation. Thank you.